Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Now we know he was trying to base jump. In a release from Grand Canyon, they reportedly were told about a visitor who tried to base jump from Yavapai Point that's on the South Rim. What if I told you that beneath one of America's most iconic natural wonders, the Grand Canyon, something ancient, fiery, and powerful might be stirring once again. For centuries, the towering cliffs and majestic river valleys have stood silently etched by time. But deep below, something may be shifting, something volcanic. Yes, you heard that right. The Uinkaret Volcanic Field, long believed to be dormant, may be showing signs of a possible reawakening. So, could magma be rising beneath the Grand Canyon? Is an eruption even possible in this region? And what would it mean for the millions who live nearby and the millions who visit every year? Let's dive into the depths of the earth and uncover what's really happening beneath the Grand Canyon. A volcano in the Grand Canyon? Yes, really. When most people think of the Grand Canyon, they imagine layers of ancient rock carved by the mighty Colorado River. But few know that this region has a fiery past. Nestled on the north rim of the Grand Canyon lies the Winkaret Volcanic Field, a chain of cinder cones, lava flows, and volcanic vents. Yes, actual volcanoes in the Grand Canyon region. One of the most well-known formations here is Lava Falls, a massive lava flow that once spilled into the canyon itself, temporarily damming the Colorado River thousands of years ago. Hard to imagine, right? But the evidence is written in stone. Literally, the rugged basalt cliffs and cooled lava layers still visible today serve as geological bookmarks of the region's fiery chapters. But it's not just lava falls. The region hosts over 200 volcanic features, including cinder cones like Vulcan's Throne, a dramatic black mound that towers ominously above the canyon rim. These cones were formed when gases and magma explosively erupted from deep underground, scattering ash and rock over miles. Many lava flows still extend across the landscape like frozen rivers of fire, some stretching more than 75 kilometers from their eruption points. What makes this even more fascinating is that the Grand Canyon's geological layers, normally associated with erosion and sedimentation, also tell a story of intrusion, heat, and explosive forces. The very juxtaposition of peaceful erosion and violent volcanic action paints a picture of a landscape shaped not just by water and time, but by fire and pressure from within the earth. While these eruptions last occurred less than a million years ago, in geologic time, that's practically yesterday. And considering that some lava flows in the region may be as young as 73,000 years old, this volcanic field cannot yet be classified as extinct, only dormant, and perhaps quietly waiting. Recent activity. Is the Earth stirring again? Lately, seismologists and geologists have noticed a subtle increase in micro-earthquakes and thermal anomalies in the broader region. While nothing definitive points to an imminent eruption, scientists are cautious. Some satellite thermal imaging suggests localized heating near old vent sites, a possible indicator of magma movement at depth. In fact, infrared satellite data has revealed isolated warm zones that appear to correspond with previous vent locations. Although these thermal anomalies are not extreme, their persistence and spatial correlation with known volcanic structures are raising eyebrows in the scientific community. Others point to slight ground deformation patterns, which could signal pressure building deep beneath the Earth's crust. Using INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, researchers have detected surface uplift in select locations across the Uinkaret field, albeit at very small magnitudes just a few millimeters per year. However, in the world of geology, even the smallest shifts can have significant implications. Additionally, local seismic networks have picked up low-frequency harmonic tremors, a type of seismic wave 
often associated with magma movement. While the magnitude and duration of these tremors have not been alarming, their presence alongside thermal anomalies and deformation suggests a deeper process may be underway. Some geologists have also noted minor changes in gas emissions in nearby soils and vents, including elevated levels of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, both common precursors of volcanic activity. These gases often escape through cracks in the Earth's surface when magma rises, providing another subtle but telling clue. Could these be early warnings? Or just geological noise amplified by improved detection technology? That's the million-dollar question, one that researchers are racing to answer before nature does. How magma moves and why it matters. Magma movement doesn't always lead to an eruption, but it's the first sign that something is changing underground. Understanding how and why magma migrates beneath the Earth's crust is essential in forecasting volcanic events and mitigating risks. Magma rises because it's less dense than the surrounding rock. This buoyancy causes it to slowly ascend through fractures, faults, and weak zones in the crust. As magma ascends, it exerts pressure on surrounding rock layers, which can trigger small earthquakes. These are often among the earliest signs of subterranean activity and help scientists pinpoint potential magma pathways. In addition to tremors, magma movement can result in the heating of underground water reservoirs, forming hydrothermal systems that surface as hot springs, geysers, or even fumaroles. These systems sometimes exhibit sudden increases in temperature or changes in chemistry, both clues that magma may be altering conditions beneath the surface. Another key sign of magma intrusion is ground deformation. As magma accumulates in underground chambers or conduits, it causes the overlying ground to bulge or swell. Geologists measure these subtle changes using tilt meters and satellite-based radar systems. Over time, these measurements can reveal whether magma is continuing to rise, stagnating, or retreating. Moreover, as magma nears the surface, volatile gases such as sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide escape. These gases often seep through the Earth's surface and can be measured using spectrometers or gas sensors. Variations in gas composition or emission rates are considered strong indicators of rising magma pressure. These warning signs, collectively called volcanic precursors, form the backbone of early warning systems. Scientists constantly monitor them to detect shifts in subsurface conditions that could herald an eruption. So if there really is magma on the move beneath Uinkaret, the signs would first appear as tremors, surface bulging, gas emissions, and geothermal changes. And that's precisely what some experts are now keeping a very close eye on. The science monitoring a sleeping giant. The U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, has instruments scattered across the region. While the Uinkaret field isn't categorized as high risk, its proximity to populated areas like St. George, Utah, and major infrastructure like the Hoover Dam makes it worth watching. Even a small-scale eruption in this area could have ripple effects on transportation, water supply, and tourism in the broader Southwest region. Advanced tools like NSAR satellite radar, tilt meters, and GPS networks help scientists detect even the slightest changes in the ground. INSAR, for instance, uses radar images taken from satellites at different times to measure ground deformation with millimeter precision. When combined with GPS stations anchored in bedrock, scientists can triangulate the direction and magnitude of crustal shifts, revealing where magma may be accumulating or migrating beneath the surface. Tilt meters, another essential tool, measure angular changes in the Earth's surface, which can indicate inflation or deflation of a magma chamber. Even minute tilting, equivalent to the angle formed by a coin lying on a tabletop, can be a sign that magma is causing the crust to bulge. Additionally, seismic arrays are deployed across the region to track earthquake swarms. These clusters of small quakes 
can sometimes precede volcanic eruptions by days, weeks, or even months. By analyzing the depth and pattern of these quakes, researchers can estimate how deep the magma is and how quickly it's moving. Gas monitoring stations also play a critical role. Instruments placed near known fault zones and vent areas regularly sample atmospheric and soil gas levels, measuring sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and other volcanic gases. Any sudden spikes in these emissions may suggest that magma is nearing the surface or that cracks are opening deeper underground. Volcanic fields like Uinkaret often stay dormant for millennia until they don't. That's why layered, overlapping monitoring systems are so important. They offer a rare opportunity to catch early warning signs and potentially forecast volcanic behavior in an area that most people still think of as geologically quiet. And when they awaken, the results can be both spectacular and catastrophic. What an eruption could look like. Let's get something straight. This isn't Mount St. Helens. If Winkeret erupts again, it would most likely be a small-scale cinder cone eruption with lava fountains and flowing basalt, not a massive explosion. These eruptions tend to be relatively localized and short-lived, typically lasting days to weeks rather than months or years. However, even a minor eruption could have significant and far-reaching impacts. Roads and trails in Grand Canyon National Park could be blocked not just by lava flows, but by falling ash, rock debris, and potential landslides triggered by tremors. This would severely hamper emergency response efforts and could isolate parts of the park from critical access points. Ash and volcanic gases could compromise air quality over a wide area, with fine particles spreading hundreds of kilometers downwind, depending on wind patterns. This could pose respiratory risks to people with asthma or other conditions and reduce visibility, grounding flights, or delaying aerial firefighting efforts during wildfire season. Lava flows, though usually slow moving, are capable of destroying everything in their path, from vegetation and habitats to park infrastructure and historical sites. They could also alter drainage patterns and potentially reroute segments of the Colorado River, as happened in prehistoric eruptions. The hydrological impact of such a change could be profound, affecting water flow, sediment transport, and aquatic ecosystems downstream. The ecological consequences could be long-lasting. A new lava field would devastate plant life, displace animals, and require decades to recover naturally. Meanwhile, the psychological impact on local communities and visitors could be just as dramatic, altering public perception of safety in the area. And then there's tourism. The Grand Canyon draws nearly 5 million visitors per year. Park closures, travel disruptions, and widespread media coverage of an eruption would undoubtedly reduce tourism revenue, strain local businesses, and reshape how people interact with this iconic landscape. In short, even a modest volcanic event could leave a deep mark on the region in ways we're only beginning to grasp. Are we prepared for a volcanic surprise? The truth is, few people associate the Grand Canyon with volcanic risk. And while scientists aren't predicting an eruption tomorrow, the region's past and its subtle signs today suggest that it shouldn't be ignored. History has repeatedly demonstrated that underestimating low probability events can lead to disastrous consequences when preparedness is lacking. Emergency response plans must be robust and dynamic. Authorities in Arizona and nearby regions should develop comprehensive protocols covering various scenarios, from minor lava flows to significant ashfall events. These plans need to consider evacuation routes, temporary shelters, emergency medical access, and communication infrastructure in remote areas. Coordination between local emergency services, park management, and federal agencies such as FEMA and the USGS is critical to ensuring timely and organized responses. Equally important is public awareness and geological education. Many residents and tourists are unaware that volcanic fields like Uinkaret exist, let alone that they could pose a threat. 
educational outreach programs, interpretive signs, visitor center exhibits, and park ranger training can all help demystify volcanic hazards. Informing the public not only prepares them for possible emergencies, but also cultivates respect for the complex geologic history of the region. Technological advancements are strengthening early warning systems, continuous monitoring of ground deformation, seismic activity, and gas emissions is now supplemented by AI-driven models that help predict eruptive behavior. Real-time data feeds can trigger automated alerts to first responders and park authorities, allowing them to act swiftly and appropriately. Because as we've seen in places like Iceland, Italy, and Hawaii, nature often acts without much warning. And when it does, the difference between chaos and control lies in preparation. Whether it's through infrastructure planning, public education, or scientific investment, readiness is not optional, it's essential. A reminder from Earth's fiery heart. So, is magma really moving beneath the Grand Canyon? We don't know for sure, but the whispers from the Earth, the tremors, the heat, the history, all tell us one thing. The planet is never truly still. Even beneath the most majestic landscapes, fire can still dwell. It's easy to assume that landscapes like the Grand Canyon, carved slowly over millions of years, represent geological calm and permanence. But the presence of volcanic fields like Winkaret challenges that perception. The Earth is in constant motion, not just from the grinding of tectonic plates, but from the restless churning of molten rock beneath our feet. Every seismic tremor, every emission of volcanic gas, and every subtle shift in the ground is a reminder that our planet breathes, sometimes quietly, sometimes violently. In geological terms, human lifespans are brief flickers. What we consider dormant may simply be biding its time. Volcanoes can slumber for thousands of years before awakening unexpectedly. The fact that Winkaret's last eruptions were within the range of recent geological time suggests that this system still holds energy within it, a potential that should not be overlooked. Moreover, the story of Winkaret isn't just about geology, it's about perspective. It's a call to respect the dynamic processes that continue to shape the Earth. It invites us to look beyond what we see on the surface and consider the forces at work deep below, invisible yet powerful. The Grand Canyon, in all its grandeur, is not just a record of ancient erosion, it's also a canvas painted by both water and fire. The Winkaret volcano may not erupt tomorrow, but if it ever does again, it will remind us just how alive the earth beneath our feet really is and how important it is that we never stop listening to its subtle, simmering voice. What do you think? Should we be concerned about volcanic activity near the Grand Canyon? Would a new eruption reshape how we see this ancient landscape? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into geology, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you won't miss our next earth-shaking story. Stay curious and stay safe.